Hey man, in front of you I have the s folders I showed in a previous video and they are now hooked up in an array. Right now there's around 8 and this is very exciting because it is a huge milestone for variable sorting but in order to understand that I'm going to talk a little bit more about what variable sorting actually is. So variable sorting was first demonstrated by Palo Palo for his binary storage system and before he got isekai he gave us two very important concepts for variable sorting. The first is a shulker box splitter and the second is a shulker box merger. Now in order to link these two modules together he used something called an item type to binary encoder and from that he used it to activate something called a temporary storage. Now what would actually happen is mix boxes would come in to the splitter get split into their own item types and then get encoded one at a time. And from the encoder, it will activate and check a temporary storage to see if the temporary storage holds the a shulker box of that item type because it's partial and you want to get two partials of the same item type to then be sent to the merger. And outputs from the merger will then go back to the encoder and you'll continue this loop until the shulker box of an item type becomes full. And then you can send it off to whatever his storage system did afterwards. Now, the solution I'm proposing is an encoderless solution. It uses the SVAR sorters that I showed in a previous video, and that would mean splitters would batch up items uh, until you wanted to sort them, and then you'll send them to the SVAR sorters, and then they will continue this loop between the SVAR and the mergers until no more pairs come through from the SVAR, and from that you would know that no more uh, boxes can be paired, cannot be merged, and then you just send them off and do whatever you want with them. Now, what's really cool about this solution is that it doesn't gate variable sorting into an encoder system, and you can actually use this then for your regular story systems. So to explain how the SVAR array works, I will explain the different phases that it enters while it's grouping boxes. So the first uh, phase is the initialization phase, and the whole point of it is to remove all item types within the current batch or when there's no pairs that can be found for them. So to quickly showcase this, I'm going to be using this uh, sample size for our batching. What happens is that the boxes would enter around here, get fed into this AB silo that I showed in the uh, variable unloader video. And when you are ready to start sending boxes, you would first cancel any more inputs from the show box builder. And then you activate this little part here that says start phase one. And from that, we are going to see the boxes come up into the array that already, you've already seen in the last video. And what's going to happen is it's going to compare boxes together and output both pairs and separate the items into three water streams. The first one is going to be over here, which is the pairing. I didn't put sign there, whatever. And the other one is going to be no pairs. But there's also going to be a third one where we know the items have been paired. It's just there's no actual pairs for them as of now. But there's probably going to be one after we start merging them later on for the uh, next phases. So we can already see the items coming through. And to kind of show that it's actually doing the right thing. So right now I've added nine different item types. And before I just said there's uh, only eight. So it has to go through a second cycle. And you just saw there, um, one other type went through. So it's just going to do its thing, it's done, reset it, and then we're going to see it pop out over here because I'm pretty sure that one had no pairs. Yep, no pairs. So you can see we've got these three boxes that have no physical pairs within the batch, and that is true. We are also then going to see these boxes in this temp silo because this temp silo is, well, Going to be used for the merging process in the next phases so that is true over here and we can actually see the pairs come through this box over here i mean in, in this chest over here which will go to the mergers so what you could see from there is that we did have three distinct outputs one actually went into the uh, pair type uh, silo over here but we had no pairs and because we know there are no pairs we can actually send them straight to the encoder straight to the encoder uh, hold on, hold on. Let 
let's go. Let's show mode. Okay, so we already saw the items went into here for items that were paired, but um, were odd numbers. So like three items came through. So we had two go through here, and then one went here. And what we can also see is that because we know that these items over here have no pairs at all, they will never ever get paired. We can actually just send them straight to the encoder. And that would mean that while we are finding pairs in motion, we are also encoding items. So very cool stuff. The next phase is phase two, the motion phase. So what that basically means is that now that we've eliminated all the item types that have no pairs, we now know definitively that within the system, uh, things will start get pairing. Now, of course, as we merge and reduce the sample size, we will eventually get boxes that no longer pair. And once that happens, we will then enter the third phase. So to kind of show you guys what an actual phase two looping phase looks like, we already saw that this block over here got pushed over here, which means that it is checking the merger to see if it's done. And depending on whether it is done or not, it will either say, hey, I got partials and I'm going to send them off to you and then you can keep uh, trying to find pairs. So for example, let's take this and these two. So we already know there's one black in the silo over there, so they'll get paired. But we also know that Magenta has no pairs within that temp silo. So if I were to chuck these in, let them get sent off and do their thing. And then let the SVRA know that the merge has just said, nope, continue phase two. It will then start moving the items from the temp silo over here into the AB silo. And you can see them going off over there. And we have a timer down there to make sure that all the inputs are ready within the silo before we actually start sending them off. And now we are sending them off. What I did not show in the previous video is how I'm actually getting items out from down here. It's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, we removed the items at a game tick and we use this system over here, which hopefully activates soon. You can actually tell that when we get items out, we are actually moving them one at a time. They are all in order. I hope you can hear me. So basically what happens is that it tells this, which is technically down here, activating the clock and if it's not, it moves up, moves on to the next silo, moves on to the next silo, etc. all the way until it gets resetted. And as you can see, it's already done finding the pairs. As you can see, it's removed black, so technically we shouldn't see black in this temp silo anymore. And we don't, and we get that measure. So very cool stuff. So once we reach the conditions where the S bar sorters are done and the merging is done, and it hasn't sent a partial nor has it received any pairs, we move on to phase three, which is the grouping. Uh, the whole point of this part is to prep the encoder and to optimize uh, the inputs that we're going to be giving the encoder. So what I said previously, um, this is encoderless. So after you're done with this system in phase three, you would actually just send all the full boxes to your chill box order, whatever. But for this case, I am using it for a encoded storage system. Uh, I'll probably release more videos on later, but once phase three happens, we actually send all the pool boxes into the system to finally get merged. In fact, I have this uh, from merge here. Yes, enter phase three. Um, click that. And then I can click this. And as you can see, all the latches activated. Now this little gate over here opens, which is the encoder batching. And this is actually really, really interesting because it optimizes your encoding so that you don't actually have to encode every single box that comes through. And I'll explain a bit more on how that works. Now, I'll talk a little bit more on how I'm actually getting the uh, pairs. Now, I have this toggle state over here, which basically, or T flip flop, whatever. And basically that counts whether the items coming through are odd, even, odd, even, odd, even. And depending on when it's finished, that's how I get my pairs. Uh, yeah, it's really not much to talk about that. And I use Ration Machine's 8 game tick aligner specifically because I want to do this encode batching thingy. And what you can just see was that it's done. I think it has another item type. No, it doesn't have. I think that's done. I do have this done thing here, which did light up. So whatever. But check this out. This is an optimization for encoded storage. What this does is that you can actually grab a wooden sword and then it'll say, hey, this is a breaker item. That means I'm going to take a one shulker box encode that, but then all leading shulker boxes onto the next breaker item is a 
will assume to be the same code that I just encoded for the first box. So for example, breaker item, take this box, and then this shelter box will be assumed whatever was encoded here. Do the same thing, in encode, assume, stop, encode, assume, assume, stop, etc., etc., etc. Which is very, very cool. So that kind of means that the encoder will only need to encode boxes based on item type, not by the number of shelter boxes. Which also means that an encoded storage system now is actually more optimized the more boxes you send it, which is super, super cool. But yeah, I think that's all I really have to show. Um, the motion array is done and the encoders are kind of done. I just would like to optimize them a bit more. And when I do, I will make a video on them.